I'm impressed with Plains here, with the way that people have moved away from the mining and now they're turning to tourism and, and you can see they're really doing well. No, I enjoyed Plains here. It was a good visit. Back onto the gravel. So, if you have a look at our map, you'll see that we've just left Kleins here and we are heading to Komachas. It's about a 32 kilometer drive that we're going to be doing on the gravel road. I've never ever heard of Komachas before, so <laughs> I want to see what it looks like. Yeah, I look forward to it. On our way out of Kleins here, we stopped off at the police station and I asked someone there, what is the best route to take through to Komachas? And they said, we must take the red road, the Roypot. It's the only road to take through to Komachas. And we immediately could see why they called it the red road, right? Totally red, yeah. <laughs> Now we are entering the town of Komachas. So I don't know much about Komachas, if anything. No. So we shall see what it delivers. I really have never heard of it. It's going to be so exciting to see. <laughs> Lots of new houses being built for you. Definitely, definitely new houses. And you're at the foot of a little mountain. Yeah. The town seems to go up to the mountain. Yeah, it does. I know you just closed your window, but did you saw that truck, right? Yes, I did, yeah. Build it. From Springbok? Yeah. Which proves
you said there's a lot of oh, building going on. Going on, yeah, yeah. It looks like it's expanding. Well, it's certainly much, much bigger than I thought. Look at it. I'm blown away. What? I am blown away at the size of this place. They don't have their petrol tank underground? No. That's your donkeys? In town. Hello, Puma has donkeys. <laughs> Oh, and it's the Komahas River that runs here, which is a tributary of the Biffles. Yes. But you know the Biffles only flows <laughs> once in every 10 years. Oh, yeah, so well, I understand that. Clearly the riverbed is dry. Eighteen seventy-eight. This house was built? Eighteen seventy-eight. Oh, that's the earth number. <laughs> Thirteen seventy-eight. <laughs> I was going to say, this is the oldest house in South Africa. <laughs> no, that's the earth number. <laughs> oh, the street number? Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh -uh. It's funny. So, what's interesting for me is the age of this town. Now that why well, that date was so important that we got confused to that date, uh, which is actually this, the house number. That this was this town was started by the London Missionary Society, and it was established in 1829. And it was taken over by the Dutch Reformed Church in 1936. That's crazy. Wasn't it taken over in between? The London Mission Society and Dutch Reformed Church, someone else? Yeah, also Rhenish Missionary Society in 1843. Oh, okay. I spy with my little eye. What? No, you just continue on your merry way. Church. I think that's Is that the mission station you think? Looks very old to me. Yeah, so it does, um, eh? you said you'd like to try and find it. I think that might be it. Well check these rocks right here in the middle of the town. Yeah, amazing, yeah. right? Amazing. It's surrounded by this mountain. Yeah. Look how that one's balanced. Calvin Protestant Kerk. Okay. Calvin Protestant Church. Okay. Komagas. I thought this tower looks old. Yeah. Okay. What do you think? Oh, uh, it does, but it's that built with face brick in between, so. Oh, uh, so it can't be. The next door is another interesting. Oh yes. Older than this. Oh yes. Look at this building. This one is. This one is. I wouldn't wouldn't surprise me. Is the original church building? Definitely. Unfortunately, no entry is allowed. Yep. But there is a 
there is a pillar. Yeah, I'm gonna stone. go a bit closer and see if I can see it. This was such a nice building, amazing building. I would have loved to have been able to get inside of it to see what it looked like. But unfortunately, because of the no entry, I couldn't get to it. Yeah, and especially because we here already had a strong suspicion it was the original church built by the missionaries. And someone in town confirmed that for us later on. Here we got to some more old buildings, which we were convinced were part of the original mission station. They had old mud bricks and incredibly thick walls. Yeah, you can see over there they've also been trying to do some renovation with the modern plaster against the wall at the bottom there. So at least they've been trying to get it back to standard. And then as we drove up here we came across another old building. Such incredible history in these buildings. I absolutely love them. We were very interested to find out about where the name of the town actually comes from and uh, we did a bit of research online and there were two options. One was the place where animals come to drink and the other one was the place where wild olive trees grow. So we asked um, a local who passed us by and he said his whole life they've known it as the place where animals come to drink. So that is what we will go with. Oh, that's interesting, eh? Very.
this community is really developing because they're building massive concrete reservoirs at the top of the hill there. And they're busy with it as we speak? Yes. So there's some development program going on over here. We need to chat. Yeah. Right, I would say. I want to get to the top row of houses there. See, there are roads there. Yeah, definitely. Let's go. The roads are good, eh? Very good. Amazed at the size of it. Want me to go up here? Or? No, it's fine. You can stay right here and I will tell you when I see what I want to show you. Here. I'll tell you when to stop. Okay. Stop. Okay, so if we had to live here, yep. you will not close your eyes at night. One eye will always be open because you're going to think that one or more of those rocks are going to come oh, rolling definitely. down. Oh, definitely. Oh, <laughs> definitely. 100%. Am I right? So as we were coming in on the red road, we saw it was going up the mountain, right? Yes, yes. But I had no idea that it was like, it's even mountainous in town. It's like these huge boulders and rocks. People have built their houses on top of the rocks. and the I've never seen anything quite like it. It's, it's actually, the location is amazing. I think this little basin was chosen specifically. Yep. And they said, we're not minding a few boulders in here and there. We wanted a closer look at the reservoirs. A gentleman uh, came out and he chatted to us and he explained that a second one is being built to increase the water storage capacity of the town. Dave at, at the reservoirs was an absolute wealth of information about Kumachas, but we lost uh, all the sound in, in that clip. We don't remember everything, um, but we do remember wow. a few things that stood out to us. 
Yeah. What stood out for me was the, the reason for them building the second reservoir is that the village runs out of water for extended periods of time. So that's the reason for the second reservoir. But they also have to increase the capacity of the water supply from the Orange River to the second reservoir so that they can have the constant supply. Yeah, water is a big issue in town, hey? He Major. made that very clear. Major issue. Yeah. And uh, then he also told us that he himself used to work on the mines. Yes, yes. In that most of the gentlemen in town still work on the mines, but, but not... not lo- at the, the Kleinsia and the Koing Nas mines no, anymore. No, because they closed down. They closed down, they closed yeah. down so they work further afield. They used to travel back and forth daily on the buses from Komachas through to Koing Nas and Kleinsia. But now they have to sleep out and they come home every second weekend because I, I can't remember the names of the other mines that they went to but they, they have to sleep out for two weeks at a time now. And he also said the, the ladies um, in town used to do a lot of weaving and spinning. Yes, he did. To sell yeah. the articles, but they do so on a smaller scale now. Um, he was just an absolute pleasure to talk to. Such a nice guy. Oh, wow. fantastic. He, he's, he's such a great ambassador for, for Komachas, which is such a great place. So uh, we asked if we could take his picture, but uh, yeah, he was too shy. He refused totally. <laughs> David also told us about the Roman Catholic Church, and uh, we're approaching it now. I um, must say that we crossed some pretty interesting street names on the way over there. First it was Pampun Street, then Spanspec Street, and the one who took the cake was Tanpain Street. <laughs> yeah. That was the funniest one for Brilliant. me that I've ever seen. <laughs> oh, we carried on driving down past the church, and I loved this wall. It is beautiful, with all the stones. Yeah. Very neat church. And we turned around here, and this cross that's been built out of stone was fantastic. Yeah, I'm glad he told us about this church. Yeah. The whole time we've been driving through Komachas, we've noticed that the roads are in excellent condition. And now we could see why. We just happened upon the grader. And it was the first time that we've ever seen one in a town. Yeah. They make their own bricks over here to build their own houses with. And they say it's a lot more cost effective. It's incredible. 
Here we had left the town of Komachas and we saw these long water lines next to the road. Yeah, I suspect these are the ones that come from the Orange River and supply the current reservoir at Komachas. Now I think this is the ones that they will want to upgrade. That would make sense. Yeah. So that was Komachas. It was fantastic. I'm telling you, I loved every minute of it. 